This is the fourth video in the Propositional Logic module for Foundations of Computer Science. I will be covering the concepts of validity and satisfiability. These terms describe interesting properties of formulas, such as whether and under what conditions the claims that the formulas express are true. I'll start by giving you the definitions. These are pretty quick, and I'll also introduce a bit of related terminology. Then we'll look at a bunch of examples, and finally, I'll talk about some basic properties and elementary theorems that relate to satisfiability and validity. Since satisfiability and validity are properties of formulas, to define them, we'll start with the formula, which we'll call A. And we say A is satisfiable if and only if the truth value of A evaluates to T for some interpretation I. And notice we've dropped our little extra subscript on I. There used to be a little A there. We're assuming this interpretation is an interpretation of the formula A. This is a pretty reasonable assumption in this case, so we don't have to write it. The idea here for satisfiability is as long as there's one possible interpretation that makes A true, we can consider A to be a satisfiable formula. There's also a special term for an interpretation that satisfies a formula. We call this a model. And any interpretation that satisfies A is called a model for A. So that takes care of our definition of satisfiability. The next important concept is validity. The formula A is called valid, denoted by this double turnstile symbol, if and only if our truth value function evaluates to true for all possible interpretations. The way you write this in symbols is just by putting the double turnstile to the left of the formula A. Another synonym that you might have heard that refers to a valid propositional formula is a tautology. This means the same thing as a valid formula. Of course, there are many formulas that are not satisfiable and many formulas that are not tautologies, and we have terminology for these formulas as well, and it is very easy. We say a formula is unsatisfiable if and only if it is not satisfiable. So in other words, going back to the definition of satisfiability above, what this means is that its truth value is false for every possible interpretation. There is no interpretation that makes it true. Finally, a formula that is not a tautology or not valid is called falsifiable. And you can write this with a negated double turn style. And what this means is that there exists at least one interpretation that causes the formula to evaluate to false. In other words, it's just not true in every single case. That is all of the terminology we're going to introduce. Conceptually, I think these are not very complicated, but all new terms take some getting used to. So to try to help us out a bit, we'll now take a look at some simple examples. Like the definitions, these are taken from Ben Ari's text. First, consider the very basic formula P implies Q. You have seen this many times, so it's a decent point of reference. Uh, we want to run through the new terms we just introduced and see which ones apply and which do not. So is P implies Q a satisfiable formula? If you understand the definition of satisfiability, this is trivial to answer. So you may want to pause for a moment and make sure that you can answer it. All right, so I assume you've done that. Remember, a formula is satisfiable if there is any interpretation that satisfies it. And so looking at the truth table, there is, and in fact, there are three possible assignments of P and Q that would cause this formula to evaluate to true. So it is certainly satisfiable. Next, is this formula unsatisfiable? Well, no, that would mean there's no interpretation that satisfies it. And we just said, this is not the case. In general, it is not possible for a formula to be both satisfiable and unsatisfiable because these properties are negations of each other and therefore mutually exclusive. Now, validity, is the formula valid? Again, maybe pause for a moment and answer for yourself. Remember, validity means it's true for every possible assignment, and we can see this is not the case. If we assign P to true and Q to false, then the formula evaluates to F, so this is not valid. Finally, is it falsifiable? Well, this just means there's a definition that causes it to evaluate to false. We just showed that there is no Finally, is it falsifiable? Well, this just means that there is a definition that causes it to evaluate to false. We just showed that there is one, so this is certainly falsifiable. 
Just like satisfiability and unsatisfiability, validity and falsifiability are negations of each other. So we'll look at a theorem for this in a moment, but I think you can see from this example that if a formula is not valid, it must be falsifiable. Now for just a slightly more complicated formula, we can look at the statement P implies Q if and only if not Q implies not P. Informally, what this statement is saying is that if an implication holds, so does its contrapositive. Again, what we want to know is, is this statement satisfiable? Is it unsatisfiable? Is it valid? And is it falsifiable? At this point, you should be able to answer all of these questions, and this would be a good place to pause and verify that you can. Now, a glance at the truth table here shows that there is a T in every row, and what that tells us right off the bat is that this is a valid statement. There is no interpretation that makes it false. So we also know it is not falsifiable. And since satisfiability is a weaker condition, we only need to know that it is true for some interpretation. We can see this is certainly also satisfiable, and therefore it cannot be unsatisfiable. Again, that would mean it is false for every interpretation, and it is not even false for one of them. Last example, we'll ask the same four questions about the formula P or Q and not P and not Q. Is this satisfiable, unsatisfiable, valid, falsifiable? Take a moment to pause and think about these questions if you need it. A salient feature of this truth table is that it has an F in every row. That is the definition of unsatisfiable. There is no interpretation where it evaluates to true. Consequently, it is clearly also not satisfiable, and it's definitely not valid. It is falsifiable because that only requires us to find one interpretation where it is false, and we actually have many to choose from. These are just very short and simple examples, and we're only using two variables so the truth table will fit on the slide. The point here is just to make sure all these definitions are making sense. The actual question of whether an arbitrary formula has these properties is generally difficult, and more difficult as the number of variables increases. You'll see later that this is solvable in general, but that the solutions are not guaranteed to be very fast. Now, as I've pointed out, unsatisfiability is the negation of validity and vice versa, and the same relationship is true for satisfiability and falsifiability. So we have a theorem that states this precisely and actually goes a bit further. For any formula A, the following are true. A is valid if and only if not A is unsatisfiable, and also A is satisfiable if and only if not A is falsifiable. So the intuition behind this is just that if a formula is true under all interpretations, its negation must be false for all interpretations, and also, if it's true for at least one interpretation, its negation must be false for at least one interpretation, namely that same interpretation. You can see a formal proof of this in the text if you're interested. The reason I've said this goes a little further than what I said already is that it actually gives you a way to derive one kind of formula from the opposite kind. So if you can find an unsatisfiable formula, we can easily create a valid formula by taking its negation. Similarly, we can get a satisfiable formula from a falsifiable one, and the opposite is also true. This is going to turn out to be useful later when we discuss algorithms for automatically determining whether formulas are valid or satisfiable, etc., and also when we are reasoning about how difficult these problems are to solve. Ben Ari gives you this diagram of the universe of formulas, and this might be helpful for visualizing the relationship between the sets of formulas that are valid, satisfiable, unsatisfiable, and falsifiable. The way he's thinking about this here is we have a set of formulas that is true for every interpretation, and these are our valid formulas. They are a subset of the formulas that are true in at least one interpretation. And this whole left side contains our satisfiable formulas, the formulas that are true at least some of the time and maybe all of the time. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, there are formulas that are not true in any interpretation, and these are unsatisfiable. There is, of course, no formula that is both satisfiable and unsatisfiable at the same time, so these sets are disjoint. Finally, the falsifiable formulas include everything that is unsatisfiable 
and also everything that is true in some interpretations, but not all of them. All right. I will add that although I think this can be a helpful diagram, it is not the only way you can draw this and you shouldn't think of it as being to scale. In particular, there's no reason to think that the set of valid formulas is smaller than the set of unsatisfiable formulas. These really are exactly the same size because negating an unsatisfiable formula gives you a valid formula and vice versa. Also, Ben already wants to highlight the fact that the universe can be divided into mutually exclusive sets of satisfiable and unsatisfiable formulas, but he could just as easily have split this between valid and falsifiable formulas. Those are also mutually exclusive. So I have to admit, I find this representation to be a bit mysteriously asymmetrical. And after thinking it over a bit, I think another way we could draw this is as follows. So here, I've just moved the sets of valid and unsatisfiable formulas to the opposite ends of our universe and try to show them as being the same size. The middle area comprising most formulas are statements that are true in some interpretations and false in others. And then satisfiable formulas and falsifiable formulas are now a bit more symmetrically represented. The satisfiable formulas are everything that's always true and everything that's true at least in some interpretations. And the falsifiable formulas are everything that is always false and everything that is false in at least some interpretations. Both this and the previous representation are legitimate ways of dividing things up. Hopefully they both make sense, but I thought it'd be nice to have some options in case one of these is more intuitively appealing to you than the other. The next thing we need to do is extend the concept of satisfiability to a set of formulas. We discussed previously what it means for an interpretation to satisfy a whole set of formulas as opposed to just a single formula. We will now give a definition of satisfiability for a set of formulas. This is a very similar idea. In the first case, we're talking about a particular interpretation and asking kind of from the perspective of the interpretation, does this interpretation satisfy the set of formulas that I'm currently considering? Now, however, we're flipping this around. We're starting with a set of formulas and saying, can this be satisfied? Which is the same as saying, does an interpretation exist that satisfies this set of formulas? The answer is yes, if and only if there exists an interpretation that makes all of the formulas in the set true at the same time. Or saying this formally, that the truth value of A sub I is equal to true for all I, meaning all of the formulas in our set. Just as we said that an interpretation that satisfies a formula A is called a model for A, so we can also say that an interpretation that satisfies a whole set of formulas U is a model for U. Conversely, if there is not such an interpretation, U is unsatisfiable. In other words, if for any choice of interpretation, there is always some formula in our set for which the truth value is false under that interpretation, then the set is unsatisfiable. Now we'll do two quick examples. If u sub one is this set of formulas here that contains p, not p or q, and q and r, three short formulas, it is satisfiable if there is an assignment that makes all of these statements true at the same time. It happens that this set is satisfiable, so please pause and take a moment to figure out an interpretation that works. There are only three variables here, so you can do this by trying things at random if you want to. On the other hand, you can also do a little better than random assignment using some reasoning about what you're seeing. P is a statement all by itself. So if P were to be assigned the value of false, then that statement would be false. And our set of statements will not be satisfied. So that choice of P cannot be part of any interpretation that satisfies U sub one. Therefore, P must be true. Also, Q and R appear in a statement that is just a conjunction. This statement can only be true if both variables are true. So for that to work, we have to assign Q and R to true. At this point, we've shown that P, Q, and R must all be true, and we've run out of variables, but we still have to check whether this actually works for our remaining statements. Now there's only one remaining statement that's not P or Q, and it turns out that this does work because if Q is true, then Q or anything is true. So this set is in fact satisfiable, and we've proven that by showing that setting all the variables to true gives a satisfying interpretation. 
We've also, by way of our reasoning, shown, in addition, this is the only possible satisfying interpretation, since anything else makes at least one statement false. Now, if we look at a second example, you can see this is similar, except we've replaced the last formula in the set with not p. That is going to cause a problem, because even without looking at the other variables, I can see if I assign true to p, then this last statement in the set is going to be false, and the set will not be satisfied. So I can't do that, but then on the other hand, if I assign p to false, that statement's true, but the first statement becomes false. And again, the set is not satisfied. So there is no possible assignment for the variable p that would give me a satisfying interpretation, and therefore there is no such interpretation, and the set is unsatisfiable. Before we conclude, I want to introduce four basic but important theorems relating to satisfiability of sets. I'm not going to prove these, but I will try to convey an intuitive sense of what they mean and why they are true. These will all be important when it comes time to develop an automatic procedure for checking whether formulas are satisfiable or valid. The first is that if a set U is satisfiable and you remove any formula from the set, the set that remains is still satisfiable. Formally, we express this using set difference notation with a set containing just one of the formulas in our set U. The takeaway here is that every formula in a set adds some kind of constraints on which interpretations can be used to satisfy that set. Loosely speaking, it's like having lots of simultaneous equations. The more you add, the less likely it is that there's going to be a solution that works for all of them. If you understand that, then it makes sense that removing a formula from the set has the effect of either doing nothing or removing constraints. It can only make the set easier to satisfy. So if the set is already satisfiable, you can't make it unsatisfiable by removing a formula. By a very similar reasoning, the next theorem says that if our set U is satisfiable and B is some valid formula, then the set containing everything in U and also that formula B will be satisfiable. This is true because B is valid, so there's no interpretation that makes it false. Therefore, any interpretation that satisfies U also already satisfies B. In other words, this time speaking even more loosely, our valid formulas are very easygoing. They are always satisfied no matter what, and when you add a valid formula to a set, you are never adding any additional constraints that might cause a satisfiable set to become unsatisfiable. The next two theorems are just applying the same ideas in the opposite direction to reason about the impact of adding and removing formulas from unsatisfiable sets. So if we have an unsatisfiable set and we add some formula to it, it remains unsatisfiable. Resorting again to my ever looser analogies, this is like if you have a group of people who can't figure out a common time where everyone is available to meet. You cannot solve this problem by inviting more people to the meeting. That's just going to make things worse. So likewise, if there's already no satisfying interpretation, adding a formula is either going to do nothing or just add more constraints on a set of variables that is already over constrained. It is never going to make an unsatisfiable set into a satisfiable set. Now lastly, if we have an unsatisfiable set that contains a valid formula, removing that formula will never make the set satisfiable. In this case, you are going in the right direction if your goal is to make the set satisfiable. You have a set that is over-constrained, and so it might make sense to think that removing formulas could make it easier to satisfy. But removing a valid formula is not going to have any effect. And this is because you already know for sure that the valid formula is not what was causing the set to be unsatisfiable. In terms of my meeting analogy, this is like if our group of people who can't find a time when they can all meet decide to make scheduling less complicated by kicking somebody out of the group, right? But the person they decide to kick out is somebody who said they can meet at literally any time of the night or day. So we would call this person Val, right? Kicking Val out of the group is never going to make scheduling easier because Val is not the problem. Likewise, since a valid formula is true under all interpretations, it's never a reason that we can't find an interpretation that satisfies a set of formulas. So we know for sure that if we remove this formula, the set is still unsatisfiable. I hope these explanations and slightly far-fetched analogies are helpful. Uh, if these theorems are not perfectly clear, what I would recommend doing is writing up some examples of satisfiable and unsatisfiable sets 
with at least one valid formula in each and just play around with them. See what happens if you remove and add formulas, etc. With that, we have reached the end of this video. I hope it was of some use. In the next video, I will talk a bit about logical consequence theorems and axioms.